I am Professor Anaï Villadrich, and today I'm the face of America. I teach sociology and anthropology and public health at the City University of New York in New York City. I've been an immigrant all my life, and I've been a refugee most of my life. Part of it is that I grew up in countries, including Argentina, that experienced um, military cups, military coups, I'm sorry, and because of that, we had to run from place to place. So I grew up in a, we talk today about multiculturalism and cosmopolitanism. I grew up in places where I experienced poverty, seeing poverty, at some points experiencing poverty as well, but that gave me a sense of reality, a sense of that the world was much more than my backyard and actually was the basis for me to be, for becoming a sociologist. If someone asked, when did I decide to become a sociologist? This was when I was a student in Guatemala during the Nicaragua War. This is many, many years ago and my best teachers were sociologists who were actually going to Nicaragua to, to help the revolution. I was a very young girl at the time and I said, these are my heroes. I, I want to become one of them. Many decades later, here I am, a professor in sociology at the City University of New York. Uh, and I just wanted to mention that one of the controversies that we're having today in, in this country is about the caravan that has created so much noise and is the subject of so much uh, hatred from the government and with the American Anthropological Association which has had put a um, press release to really debunk all the myth about the caravans including the fact that these caravans are not organized by Soros or by you know the Middle Eastern terrorist groups these caravans are actually a way of protecting, to protect uh, people who are being persecuted, that not only from Honduras, but also from, even from Mexico, Guatemala, etc. And they get together to find a way to move to, away from poverty and violence. I have a wonderful memory of me staying at a Martha Washington Hotel. This was a hotel that no longer exists. This is more than 20 years ago. And it was a hotel that was basically an affordable residency for, residence for women, women who were poor, uh, sex workers lived there, retired senior women uh, lived there, young immigrants lived there, and I, I was one of them. This was on 29 and Park, and I remember getting out of that of Martha Washington Hotel, that now is a very expensive uh, high-rise, thinking in five years from now I will be remembering this time with a romantic feeling of uh, achievement because at that time I, I have little money I just I was a new immigrant in New York trying to get a oh I didn't even consider myself an immigrant because this is an important misunderstanding most people who come to the United States uh, don't even see themselves as staying here forever. They come here to achieve dreams. They still the idea of the American dream is pretty much uh, alive and well. So I was here to do a PhD. I came here to really change the world in many ways, to achieve skills that were very difficult to get in my own country. So I didn't see myself as an immigrant, but I see myself as someone who would accomplish and become a very renowned and respected scholar and I could see myself there. I said, this time will pass, but I have to really grasp this moment and be an honor this moment in time. Do not forget where you're coming from. We need to go back in time and remember that this country has been anti-immigrant quite often. I mean, if we think, if we go back in time to the early 19th, 20th century, you know, Irish, Italians, you know, Russians, they were not part of the white uh, melting pot. Through time, 
Italians became incorporated, Irish became incorporated, even certain groups of Germans were not liked. So they became part of the white uh, melting pot. Uh, so we have seen anti-immigrant anti uh, backlash movements in America through its history. We need to remember also Ellis Island as the place where you know, they had the, the immigrants went through a horrible medical inspection, people were, were sent back, etc. So the, the, this, the fear of immigration is not new and it's not particularly part of the United States. This, this runs through the world. And the media and the government are the ones to blame in many ways. And I would say the media in this case, because it's the easiest way to blame the economic downturns, the issues a country goes through, the easiest way to find a, a scapegoat is to use the immigrant saga. The second thing I need to mention, and this is very different from the early 20th century, is that the immigrants that come to the United States are not the easy ones to be assimilated as the, one, as the, one, as the ones that preceded us. These people are, are people of color, okay? These people are, are I would say I'm the, the white example of the Latino way, right? Uh, in the sense that many people like me, we don't even consider ourselves people of colors. But when we talk about immigrants in the United States today, we are talking about people of color. So it's this new wave of racism, the racism that is being displaced from, you know, the African American population now into this new horse of, of immigrants basically of color, people of color come, come into the U.S. So it's racism really pervading the idea of anti-immigrant sentiment in the U.S. today. This is a gorgeous moment in time. I'm saying gorgeous because many of us go back to the first question we had when we became social scientists. Many of us wanted to become world changers we wanted to make a difference and actually one of the reasons I, I said this at the beginning i became a sociologist is because i wanted to become the next sandino uh, follower right uh, in many ways i think that is it's like the hen and the egg i mean many of us are coming out we have many women and, polit and, and intellectuals now taking office and, and and playing public roles so i don't think that there is just one path. Sociologists, as any other member of any other profession, can play different roles. And one important role is to show inequality, the, the difference in ways in which this country is reproducing inequality in, in terms of race, ethnicity, gender, for instance, new forms of segregation, spatial segregation, new forms of oppression, from even the latest one is what we call food, op food oppression. We are at the time today in America where we have so much the food for the plenty and at the same time we have one of the latest epidemics, which is the obesity epidemics, which is the, 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 the epidemics of the poor. So, uh, so sociologists and social scientists has, have many roles to play in policy making, in policy guidelines, in teaching the new generations. I mean, what we teach in the classroom has a multiplying effect on, on people who are going to become politicians, on, on others who are going to play public roles. So I don't see ourselves playing just one a small role. I see ourselves as multipliers. That's the way to put it. We are multipliers of social change.